Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be going through the design and 3D printing of a holder that I made for my phone here. The motivation behind this is because I like to lay in bed at night and watch videos and I like to uh, have my phone lying on my nightstand horizontally next to me uh, and I don't want to have to lean it up against something so I decided to make this holder for my phone. The limitations that I have on this design were that I wanted it to print in one piece. I'm limited by the max dimensions of my 3D printer. I didn't want any supports when I was printing. I also didn't want any moving parts. I wanted a short print time and I also wanted it to be easy to attach to the phone and the last thing that was important was to have access to all the buttons on the phone so I have volume buttons here and I have a power button here and then I have the uh, charging port down here. So the first step was to measure the dimensions of my phone uh, with this pair of cheap calipers here and so this is a sideways horizontal view of my phone like this. You can see that we have the volume buttons here we have the power button over here so the uh, length of the phone is 149.5 millimeters the width of the phone is 77.5 millimeters and that's not including the buttons so that's just me measuring uh, just like this right here. And then the lengths to the buttons from the top to the end of the volume button is 50 millimeters and from the top to the end of the uh, power button is 65 millimeters because remember I don't want the holder to interfere with these buttons at all. And then if you look at the side view like this, I have an otter box on here and there's a little bit of an overhang in the uh, in the box which is why it comes out here. And so I care, all I care about is the, is the thickness from the back to the front of that overhang because I don't care about what the thickness is here because I'm not clamping it uh, based off of the thickness of the phone. So I measured the thickness to the edge of the outer box and that ends up being 13 millimeters. And then one thing on this that it's hard to see here is that it's curved on the top as opposed to some of the square boxes. One of the uh, things that I wanted in the design was I didn't want uh, the, the holder coming over and then obscuring the uh, screen here. So I want it to come over just enough that it'll hold the phone in place when it's sitting vertically on both the top and the bottom. Based off of this, I wanted to have a little like curved lip over the top. And so I need to measure that, uh, whatever this curvature is so that I can model that. And so I essentially just measured half of the the thickness here and that gives us this 6.5 millimeters and then I also measured from the point where it starts curving up to the top and that's two millimeters. So the design that I landed on uh, looking from a front view like this was something like this where I have the holder starting like about here and this is also showing the back now and then essentially coming down as it looks kind of like an A because what I wanted I wanted to be symmetrical and centered so I had it coming down about like an A like this and it will kind of clamp over on the top here and then it comes down and it's a stand like this and then it'll clamp also on the bottom here. Uh, I'll make this more clear when you see the actual model and the figure before but that's essentially what the design looks like so that it's so that I still have access to that button and then I also have access to this button and the base is a little bit wider so that it uh, supports the the phone without it tipping. So here are the uh, dimensions for the design. So the red is the phone again looking sideways. Basically I needed to design it around the phone dimension so the first dimension I needed was this essentially from the bottom of the holder to the top of the holder and recall that the total width of the phone uh, in this direction here is uh, 77.5 millimeters. So the way that I chose 78 millimeters was to take my caliper, I moved it to about, well, not about, to 78 based off of the resolution of this caliper. And then I uh, took my phone and kind of went like this and saw, does that make sense for the amount of leeway I want uh, in the holder just so that it's easy to slide in? 78 made sense to me, so the height from the top point to the bottom point here is 78. Uh, for the top here, I just wanted a little bit of thickness so that it was strong enough, so I picked two millimeters. On the bottom here, I just figured 25 millimeters is fine for the height above the, the bed stand, not a problem. This little extra foot here uh, is just so that it has a little bit more support from falling over, even though it's vertical anyway. And this I just chose the 6.5 millimeters, that's just arbitrary. If we focus in on this top part here, which is the same as the bottom part, uh, if we look at this again from the previous whiteboard, I have the, the height from this point where the turning starts up to the top is two millimeters, and then from the midpoint out to that point, in this direction is 6.5, same for here to here is also 6.5. That makes that 13 millimeter width of the phone from the back to the front of the outer box. And then again, just a little bit of thickness here just for the printing will be one millimeter. And the back, I want it to be three millimeters. I'm printing with 0.3 millimeter layer height, so I'll get about 10 layers uh, on the back there. And the way that I want this to print, this is kind of an isometric view of what this is when I extrude it. And again, I'll show this in Inventor. I'll go through the design there, but essentially I'm just gonna take this and I'm just going to extrude it back backwards and then I'm going to cut out what I need. So this is the extruded piece and what it's going to, the way that we're going to print this is I'm going to print this uh, with the back 
the backing on the print bed. So it's gonna be kind of rotated like that sitting on the print bed. So when it prints up, it's gonna be printing layer by layer like this. It's gonna keep on printing. And that's another reason to have this curved, this curved piece here so that we don't have any of these overhangs. It's gonna actually build up and kind of keep on moving outward uh, so that there's no overhangs that are just sitting there wide open. It's gonna build outwards like that, same on the bottom here. So now that we have the profile design, I want to figure out how far I wanted to extrude it. So recall that the phone is about 150 millimeters in length, and from the edge to this button where I don't want to cover these is 50 millimeters. So uh, I can break this phone up into thirds essentially. So we got 50, the middle 50, and then the other 50. So I extruded that piece that I had, that side profile, to a width of 50 from here to here. And so if I put that kind of on top here, like this, this is what it looks like now. I'm excluding that bottom portion of it, but it looks something like this. Okay, and that's obviously not good because it's still covering up this part, so I decided to say, okay, well I want to start it from here and end it here just to keep things symmetric. And so I chose this length, this is again 50 millimeters, I chose this length from here to here is 15 to keep it symmetric. This one's also 15, and that means that the middle piece is about 20, so that's the good piece right there. And then I wanted to widen out so that we had a good structural base here. And again, it's 50, and so what I decided to do was just to, again, make this 15, make this 15, middle part 20, and then I connected this piece down here, and connected oops, this piece down here, and then I made a sort of A pattern like that. And so this, is what the final piece uh, will look like along with the little base area at the bottom like that. So I extruded the piece out and then I just cut out these pieces right there and that gives us our final uh, holder design. So now we'll take it to Inventor to see uh, how to design it. So here we are in Inventor and we're gonna go to File and I'm gonna go to New and then we want a millimeter part because I did all my measurements in millimeters. And so here we are in the part and now we need to start, and I'm gonna start it on the XY plane, so I'm gonna right click, new sketch, and the first thing I wanna do is create a rectangle, and so we'll just create a random sized uh, rectangle here, and this is a smaller window than I usually work with because I'm usually on my external monitor, so you just have to bear with me here, but so we have this uh, rectangle, and we wanna get the outer dimension, so I'm just gonna right click, go to general dimension, top here we have our uh, 13 millimeters plus three millimeters plus one millimeter, uh, if you check back to the whiteboard. And so that'll give us a 17 millimeter width. And then the height here, we have the 78 millimeters for the phone plus the two at the top, which gives us 80, plus the 25 at the bottom, which gives us 105. So that's the total dimensions of the phone holder like that. And now we need to start doing all the extra stuff in the middle to cut out where the phone's gonna be. So we're gonna put in quite a few construction lines here. So I'm gonna do create a line. I want a construction line for the top. I want another one for the bottom of the phone. Then I'm gonna want one for the uh, back of the phone. And then I'm gonna want one for the middle of the phone. And I'll show you what these are doing in a second. I'm just gonna right click on each of them. I'm sure there's faster ways to do this. Uh, and I'm gonna make them all construction lines like that. Okay, and so we know that the uh, general dimension for the phone height is gonna be 78. And when we know that we want from the top to the top of the phone, we want that one to be two millimeters. And from the back of the phone to the back of the holder, we want that to be three millimeters. And this guy, from the middle of the phone to the back of the phone, that one's gonna be 6.5 millimeters. Okay, so that should take care of that. Now, the other thing I wanna do here is add in a point and this is because we're gonna do this curved section. And so I'm just gonna add a point in on here. And the way that I'm gonna specify where this is gonna be is to dimension the point from the construction line here. And we know that this is gonna be two millimeters. So we need to draw a curve from here to here, but it's not circular as you can see. If you draw a circle from here to here, it's not gonna, uh, it needs to be tangent to this top line here. And so what I'm gonna use is this tangent arc. And to use the tangent arc though, I need to move this construction line, this point, back to the middle here. And I'll just move this guy over here. And the reason you'll see in a second is if I use this arc and I pick the point here, you can see it makes an, a, an arc tangent to that, uh, starting at that point to the construction line. And so I can take this and bring it out to the point like that. And that's perfect. And so then what we wanna do is just mirror this, cause it's gonna be the same on the other side. So I'm just gonna take 
I'm going to go to mirror and we're going to select this and I'm going to mirror it about the middle point, apply, done. And then we want to draw a line that one millimeter from the edge here. And we can also measure that just to make sure. So if you measure, you can go to measure, measure distance from here to here. And it ends up being, oh, that's why it's not showing up. It ends up being one millimeter, just as we had planned. Now the next thing, we need one more construction line because I want to I want to mirror this down to the bottom, down to the uh, bottom of the, uh, to put this at the bottom of the phone. And so we need one more construction line. So we're just going to create a construction line like this. And that will be half of 78. So I'll make this first, make it a construction line. And then we can dimension this from here up to the top. And we'll do 78 divided by 2. And so that makes it 39. And then now we can mirror. And now we want to mirror this, this, and this. You don't have to control it. It'll just add them. And then we'll pick the mirror line as the center line there. If we do apply, we should see them down there. And so they appear down there. Done. Uh, now we need to draw the line from this point down to the other point. So we're just going to create a line. And we're going from this point because we need to create the backing. So we're going all the way down to here. And that creates that line. That's perfect. Now the problem is that we have this extra piece in here, and so what we can do is then just trim it because we don't need it anymore. So I can just trim, I'm clicking and dragging through, trim that as well. And now we have essentially uh, the holder except for that little piece at the bottom, that little extra foot. So I'm just going to create a line going from this point out to here, up to here. And then I'm going to dimension the angle. I'm just going to make it a 45 degree angle like that. And then I'm going to dimension the height. So I'm going to pick this point and don't pick the point down here or pick this line because uh, because the point might disappear. So I pick this because it's because we're going to trim that little piece right in here. And so I pick this and I'm going to make it 6.5 and that brings it down to a, a 45 degree, uh, a 45 degree by 45 degree, 90 degree triangle here. And then we're just going to trim this little piece right in there. And that should do it for our sketch. So we're going to finish the sketch and zoom back out and that looks good. And so now what we're going to do is extrude this. So I'm going to take this sketch right here and then you can go to extrude. And now you can see it's uh, waiting for us to put in the dimension in the direction that we're going to extrude. I extrude it the other way backwards and then we're going to put in the 50 millimeter extrude. Press enter and that is the part. Now that we have this extruded part, the last piece of the puzzle is then to cut out those pieces so that it looks like that A shape that I showed before. So I'm going to start a sketch on this back edge here. It doesn't really matter which one you uh, start at, but I'm going to start it here. New sketch. And then I just need to create some lines here. So we're going to start here and kind of, um, not there. We want to start it right at the edge. Then we're going to move it over here. And then we need to bring that point down to this corner. And then connect those. And then we also want one from this corner over to here. And we'll dimension these in a second down to the bottom corner up to that guy again. And then the last part is this one down here. Oops. And we'll just go up and then we'll come down and then we'll go across. Okay. And so let's dimension these. So we're going to dimension uh, from here to here, we know that we want that to be 15. We also want this guy to here to be 15. And that sets that middle piece to be 20. And then down here, we want this guy to here also to be 15. This guy to here to also be 15. And that sets that bottom one to 20. And then this one, we want this point to here since the thickness is 20 is a uh, 50 millimeters. We want this to be half that at 25. And then I said we wanted the point all the way up to the top to be 15 millimeters. And that finishes that. So we can finish that sketch there. And now we just want to extrude these pieces. So I'm going to click on extrude. And now I'm going to select the profiles. So I'm going to select this piece here. Let me just flip this so that's easier to see. And then I want to select this piece here. And then I want to select the middle piece here. And we're just going to go through all, press OK. And now we have our final design. That's what my final uh, design looks like. The next step now that we have our part here is to export it as an STL file so we can import it into our slicing program. So we'll go to File, Export, CAD Format, and then it starts out as a DWG file. And we'll just go to STL. And I've already saved mine out to Samsung Holder, so I won't save that out again. And now we have the STL file. So I've opened up Slicer, which is what I used uh, for slicing my parts. And I'm going to go to Add, and we'll go to Samsung Holder. And here it is. And then you zoom out and you're like, oh, this is tiny. And that's just because we need to multiply it by 
a thousand percent. That's just the way that it imports it uh, when I design it in millimeters. And so we right click, go to scale uniformly, enter a thousand. And that's good. And you can see down here the dimensions. Recall that we set our uh, vertical dimension to be 105 millimeters. So now it's all good to go. And then, and the width of that was 50 millimeters, etc. So if you look, if you zoom out like this, you're like, oh no, it goes past the plate. But if you rotate it, you'll see that it doesn't. And so we don't want it to print like this because this would be absurd. And what I said was that we wanted the back portion to be lying on the print bed. And so to get that back on the bed plate, uh, we can see that this red one is the x axis, this green is the y, blue is the z. So we need to click on it, right click rotate around the y-axis and we need to rotate at negative 90 degrees and now the back is lying on the plate and just to make sure I don't hit the extents of this uh, of my print bed it looks like it's good right now and it's probably fine but what I, what I did was I just also rotated it around the z-axis uh, 45 degrees just so that it lays down like this and now there's a little bit more leeway at the edges of the bed. The last thing to do before we send it to the 3D printer is to check some settings and so I always go down to preview first and this is where you can scroll through the layers just to check out what's going on and so we go to print settings and so I'm using a layer height of 0.3 millimeters uh, I actually like it better when you go down to 0.2 millimeters or 0.1 millimeters but I wanted this to print faster and the lower you go the slower it prints even though you get a uh, finer surface uh, finish but this one was fine for this particular print so I do 0.3 First layer height, I do 0.35 millimeter, a little bit more just to get that, uh, to get a good adhesion on the first layer. Some of these other ones, the fill density needs, doesn't need to be very high. I could probably go to 5%. Uh, I think I might have printed with 15, I forget. Uh, but that's what this, this honeycomb shape is, 10% like this. And that should be fine, also printing in the base right there. Uh, and then there's some other settings here. I'll just skim through these so that you can take a look at them. And if we go to speed, speed is the important one that I use, that I've been fiddling with recently because I, I used to print way too fast and I was wondering why I had to slow down on my printer to slow down to a speed multiplier of about 0.7. Um, and so what I've been changing, I printed a 3D Benchy the other day to kind of dial these in and make sure that everything was working right. And so uh, these are the settings that I use uh, for, these are the settings that I've been using that give me a nice print quality without any manual interaction on my printer. And then I'll just go through some of these again, and these ones don't really matter, but you can stop the video if you really care. Uh, this one, filament, I'm using 1.75 millimeter uh, filament. I'm just using an extrusion multiplier of one. Uh, the temperatures I set a little bit higher on the first layer, and the other layers go a little bit lower. And the printer settings, uh, this is the one that I have been fiddling with recently. I was trying to get my retraction uh, in to be better because I had a lot of stringing, so I I uh, found that a length, a retraction length of four millimeters was good with a speed of 60 millimeters per second. And so these were the settings that worked for me. The last step is to export the G code. And so we're just going to export it by clicking on this button here, saving it, and then taking that saved G code file and putting onto our mini SD card that we can put into our uh, 3D printer. So here's the final product. You can see it's standing. It looks kind of like an A and it was printing, it printed like this on my 3D printer. And so I can take my phone and essentially just slide it in like that, and there we go. And you can see that when I center it, the uh, on-off button is not being uh, covered. And same thing on the bottom here, the two volume buttons are not being covered either.